let's put up a light on a light stand. Put the light down, first of all, so that you can handle the stand. Unlock the top of it, put it on the floor, spread the legs by pulling out on those three legs. Just grab each of the three legs all at the same time and pull out and down. If you try and push like this, you might never get it done. You have to just get that angle out on each of those three legs. Then you can push down. Okay? Make sure that your bottom collar is also locked because if it's not locked, all sorts of strange things happen. You can use this bottom collar to lower your stand right to the ground if you need to. Okay? Get your light. Look at the lock off on your light. Make sure that your lock off nut is not locked into the hole so that when you put your spigot in there, it actually slips onto this light stand instead of getting in the way. Then lock off the light so it doesn't fall off when you carry it. Then get your cable off that, uh, off the light. Plug it in if you're using the light here. Don't look into the light when you plug in in case it is on because uh, you're not going to be able to see much for quite a while. So once you've plugged in, open the barn doors and you're ready. Okay, once you've switched on your light, you can flood or spot the light. If you look on the back here, you'll see flood to the left, spot to the right. As you spot, it goes much tighter beam and as you turn it goes flat, becomes wider and softer. If you need to raise your light, just unlock the top collar usually and raise your light. Not to the top because it's very weak here, but before the top so that you get a bit of strength of piling there. Okay? You might want to go up much higher and use your second stage and even your third stage. Okay, when you're bringing the light down, make sure you support it. Usually grab the pole, unlock it, support the weight of the camera and let it down. Try not to bump. Because if your bubble's still hot, you could break it if you let this thing fall down to the bottom. It cost you a lot in bubbles. Okay, once you have your light in position, and this is where you're going to keep it, get a sandbag to keep it here. Put it inside the leg so it doesn't fall off. And then your light's safe. It won't be able to be pulled over by someone stepping on the cable or anything. When you're setting your light, there's another lock off on the right of your light but you're going to need to lock off if you want your light to stay where you set it. Yeah. Okay. This is a redhead. 800 watts of light with a parabolic reflector. It's tungsten and uh, it also has a spot and flood mechanism move the parabola backwards and forwards. Uh, industrial switch, very important to have on light because there's a lot of resistance as you switch on and off. You've got a mounting which can be mounted straight into the light or in the bottom of the yoke. Making flatter against the ceiling. You could mount your light straight up on a stand like that or you could mount your light from the bottom. If you're mounting from the top like that um, in a backlight situation up in the corner of a room, then you could Put your spigot in there and have freedom to pan your light when uh, adjusting it. If you need to take the bond off, you've got to be able to undo the screw with your fingers. And then you can lift this top off. And then your bond will actually slide out of the other three holders which hold it. On this light you see a protection net in case the bubble inside there blows because it shoots little bits of hot glass all over the room.
This is a normal blonde, <clears throat> a two kilowatt blonde tungsten light with a flood and spot mechanism at the back. When you flood a light, you cause the parabolic reflector to move further away from the bubble, causing the reflected light beam to spread. Spotting the light moves the reflector closer to the bubble, giving a more concentrated shaft of light. Never touch the bulb with your skin. Make sure it's not hot for one thing. And make sure you're unplugged. The glass is red hot. Yeah. And it might not look hot, but it could be enough to sear your skin and burn away flesh. Not only that, the oil on your skin, even when you put it on a, on a cold bulb, uh, will, if you replace that bulb back into the light, the oil on your light from the skin causes the variances in the surface temperature of the bubble and that bubble will blow in very short order and their cost is considerable. This is a, a tungsten light. You can actually see the filament itself, which is tungsten metal. That's why it's called tungsten. It gives off, gives off light at 3200 to 3400 Kelvin. The contacts in the blonde are spring-loaded. So when you, when you replace a bubble, you actually need to depress the spring-loaded contact. Barn doors, very useful for cutting off the light or uh, limiting the light. Barn doors of the light allow you to control some aspects of the strength of the light and the shape of the light that you're projecting onto whatever it is that you're lighting. Okay, so now we'll go through the different aspects of the barn doors. You have the top barn doors, like that, which can create a nice line above your subject, therefore differentiating, once again, the foreground from the background. You generally try and get the light off the background and the light onto the object that you're shooting, be it a thing or a human being, and that will keep the two separate, creating the illusion of three dimensions. You've got little gel clips here, which will fit a gel underneath. You could actually put your gel under there, and of course if it's too loose, it'll just flop out. I'd rather get wooden pegs, they're becoming okay. scarce, so buy a big pile. You generally barn door off, use the barn door to barn off the background, because you're lighting the foreground actors, you want to take light off the background. You can make nice slants. You can make a, Chinese a, long, eye. a long, thin strip of light on your background so as to cut off anything you don't want by, with the top bond or on the bottom bond door or you can make a much smaller little block of light by putting the middle thing making it a two and then you get a little square of light coming out of that, that light or you can keep these really far in until you get a very small from a, such a big light you get a very small little thin strip of light that coming good out good for eye lights behind camera if, if they're in the light like this they get very hot. When you adjust it, make sure you do it with gloves on or with a peg or anything that Isn't your doesn't skin. burn. HMI lights are arc lights and have a halide metal iodide gas as a medium for the arc. They are daylight balanced. That's a 5600 degree Kelvin color temperature. The light and the separate ballast are connected by a cable. Lining up the slit at the top with the little key at the top there. So that goes to the top, comes in like that. Then the collar, keeping this straight, turn the collar in on the key waves. When you switch on or strike an HMI, it takes 30 seconds to a minute to stabilize to a daylight color temperature, which is 5,600 degrees Kelvin. Spot and flood. That flood, That's flood. makes a large light source but less light and spotting. Spotting gives a much narrower, tighter, concentrated pressure. light. I'm going to push the spring-loaded clip here. Up. Right. There you have a Fresnel lens, which is actually leveled glass all the way through, with a safety screen of a wire on the front to stop the glass damaging people. 
On the side here, you've got a release clip which will allow your Fresnel lens to be swung away. And inside, you can see an HMI bulb. As you can see on an HMI bulb, there is no element inside there. It's a halogen gas inside the tube, 40,000 volts or so to spark it, and which arcs across the gap from that electrode to that electrode inside your halo gas, Once which again. produces about 5,600 because of the white spark. Don't touch this glass here because it's such a high temperature that the oil from your finger um, will burn into the glass and cause a weakness in the glass and probably explode on you. Calculating the amperage drawn by a light involves dividing the wattage, in this case 1,200 watts, by the voltage, which in our country is 220 volt, and that equals 5.45 amps. So the 5.45 amps is the load the light puts on your circuit breaker switch. In practical terms, that means 3 by 1200 kilowatt lights on the same circuit will trip out a 15 amp circuit breaker switch. Right, welcome to the three point lighting exercise. Here to help us today is Lee and Wrench here, who are going to be the models that we will light. The way we will be teaching you this is Vincent de Jager, our DOP, will be taking you through the process of making art, making faces look beautiful. Right, Vince, turn this into something that looks nice. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just soften this light by bouncing it off the sheet. Okay, how does that shot look? It just looks softer. I think we're going to have to use all of the other we'll tricks we can. Lighting. Just explain about bounce light. Instead of going straight onto them, I'm actually just going to bounce it off the ceiling. Okay. So the light's much, much softer. Instead of a straight, harsh source. Yeah, but that's still very flat. Very flat. If you look at the picture. Okay. I'm not going to, not going to use this one at all. I'm actually going to go with the preset lights that I've set up around the sides there. I'm going to go and do. I'm going to go and do the key light. Okay. Okay. This way. Watch your eyes. I'm going through a four by four trace. Yeah. If you look at the shot, you've only got one side light coming through. Doesn't look so good, does it? Okay. Let's go to the side light. Yeah. How's that looking now? Starting to look a little bit better. Let's go to the backlight. We've got the backlight here, which is half orange. Coming to my key light here again. Okay. Okay, the background behind the heads is very hot. I want to actually cut a bit of that light with this flag by lowering until the shadow is just above their heads. But all of my light's still coming through in the rest of the shot, which is quite wide. It's all the way from here to here. Okay, I'm just taking down this area a little bit down, because this is my strongest front light, key light. And then my side light. The side light, also coming through a trace frame here to soften it, make a bigger source. I'm keeping it about that big, I can actually make it bigger here. Goes stretch more around the side of their face if I open up like that. And I'm going to flood it out so it's fully flooded. Now that's also giving me background. The shadows, I'm just going to cut off the background from this light if I can. Okay, making sure the flag's not in shot, of course. Okay. Um, I'm going to adjust the backlight a little bit. I think I need to spot it up a bit. And it's adding a little bit of texture to the brunette hair. Okay. Nice day scene, day interior. Okay, let's see what the effect of each light alone is on our girls. Let's go to the backlight. Okay. Just to rim them a little bit. 
klink. Again. See that? I'm going to switch off. There. Gives you a bit of 3D. Gives you a bit of 3D as you switch it on and off. Let's go and see what effect the side light has on these two. Okay, you look in there. Okay, how does it look? Okay, there's no backlight. That's what the side light's doing. The other side of their face, okay? That's the effect of spot and flood. Very subtle. I like it about there. Okay, got that. I'm going to go and do the, the key light now. Okay. This is the main light source. Okay. Taking it off. Put your eyes. That's your key light, lighting almost everything, but it's creating those big heavy shadows in the background over here, which are much better than that original light we had, which was a straight hard light, giving us very definite shadows. We've softened out the shadows by using this 4x4 trace of half diffusion, just to give me a big source instead of a straight source too, which would look like this. You'll see that in the other picture. Too harsh, yeah. Most too harsh. Does the same thing. The shadows are very hard. I'm going to come back in and fall over. A little bit. Swing over. Okay. That's key. Let me switch them all on. Can you come with me? Yeah. I'm going to put that side light on so you can see again. Flat. Backlight. And on comes the backlight. On comes the backlight. Okay. Just to make it a little bit more 3D. Backlight. Yeah. They interior. I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't make it bright, as though they're standing outside in the sun in the shady area. Rather inside, bright windows illuminating them, giving them. I don't have any justification in the shot. There's no practical lamps in shot, so the light can come from anywhere. got a model here and we're going to try and get some nice molding on it. Try and get it looking as sexy as possible. Okay. There's a top, there's a bounce light just off the ceiling. It's there, she's illuminated, but uh, there's no molding, no nice slightly deeper shadows to just give a bit more contrast in the shot. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rim her from the top by putting a a reflector above her, bouncing this light, which I was bouncing on the ceiling. I'm going to reflect this light from above her, there, in the background, onto her. Onto her. You can definitely see that effect, okay? As I flash through this light here. Do it again. Quite strong, Do it again. Do it again. Okay. Allows you to see the effect of what the light's doing for you. Yeah, that's just a cutaway you need there. Okay, good. Next, I'm going to get her from the left with a quite a large soft source, still a small light. I'm only using 150 peppers here. This is a nice light, it's got a dimmer on it. Let's watch the picture. Okay, just get a little bit of a fill from the left. It's actually a full, not a side light, this one. But you're filling from the side, so it's fine. That would take it all the way up. It's not what we want. I want to go to about there. Got that? If you look at the picture, if you look at the picture, you see on the right hand side of the picture, it's sort of melding into the darkness too much. We're going to try and separate her a little bit. I've got a little backlight set up here. Okay, as I come on, okay, now because she's blonde, because she's blonde, we can't, 
might be an idea to do the rest of the body and not her hair because the hair is going to blow. Blow means overexposed. Blow means overexposed, of course. Right. What we should do. Just separate you from the background that side. Good. Okay. My last problem I've got here. My last problem I've got here. I need some sparkle in the eyes. I've got this last light I set up here. Which is going to fill because it's in the key position. But if you want it to reflect other eyes, you actually got to have it here. You can take a 350 and put lots of ton lots of diffusion paper in front of the light to give a sparkle in the light. This will work just as well, a 150 paper. But I don't want to, I don't want to kill the whole, all my effect that I've got there. That's almost back to where we were, excepting for that nice top rim. Eh? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a happy medium between that fill and the sparkle, which I know is going to come from here. If when you go for close-ups, in the eyes. I'll take it to there. It's very, very far down. Look how far down this is. See, not much full on the body, eh? but there'll be sparkle when you go tighter in on the eyes. Watch. See that little sparkle? Two little sparkles here. There we go. Okay, one of the sparkles is this one. And the other one is that one, the one I've just set, dedicated sparkle light. Actually, the little orange sparkle you can see on the bottom left of your eyes is this pepper on the left. Okay, to recap, I've switched off everything excepting that one little eye light. So you can still see she's there, but uh, you need to you need to switch on a backlight to remove from the background. Okay, to give that little bit of separation. Okay, I wonder if I could change it in any way. I'm coming to that side light again. That side light. Okay. Don't want to take it too far up, keep it subtle. There. Okay, side light. Over there. The eye light's not doing much as you can see. Of course, can overpower everything, so be careful with the side light. Problem with these lights is on the dimmer. If you go too low down, you're actually getting a very low color, very orange out of the light, instead of coming up to the normal white. These are all 3,200. These are all tungsten lights. But way down on the dimmer, this becomes a very orange light, 2,400 Kelvin, not 3,200. Okay, let me set that just for those eyes. Maybe slit it, make it a smaller one. It's going to be more difficult. You can barn door it down so it's not actually touching the body or anything. It's only touching the face now. Okay. Nice little orange sparkle in there. Okay. Backlight. I've got this backlight here. See that hair, nice, bring it up a little bit, okay. I've got my backlight on the right, 
I've got my backlight on the right of the model because I've got a fill on the left. Your backlight is a highlight around the back there. Yeah, that's widened out the resource. But it's looking a bit dark on the left hand side. So, let's switch on the next one. That's this light source. You can see on the monitor, you can see in that picture, it's a side light that's giving me a sheen coming around the left of the bottle. The problem is it's very side and added this light to extend that further around the front of the bottle. So what's happened is I've joined. I've joined this. I think you need to come over shoulder. <clears throat> yeah. I've joined the reflection from this source and that source on the bottle so that it brings it further around the left of the bottle. Okay, that's just an effect slight in the psych on the background okay. giving you a glow that comes up around the around the back of the bottle no effect on the bottle yeah what's that one doing this one <clears throat> this one's just picking up the bottom of the label here and giving us a bottom rim here See how dead the bottom goes as you as you put on this front light through the bottom here. It actually takes that and leaves a little bit of shadow detail there. Leaves a little bit of shadow. Okay, the background is a bit bright. Too bright. So I want to cut the background without cutting off the bottle too much. Okay, just cut off the background and don't take too much off the front of the bottle. There we go. One thing I can add okay, is this here. I'm actually going to loosen all of this and show them how those two are joined together. Okay, just cut off the background and don't take too much off the front of the bottle. Okay, that sheen off the left of the bottle is actually two sheets. We originally had it like this and we realized we had to move this in until the two sheens came together and became the one sheen. That's all finicky. That's where we wanted it. So you've got one long sheen as soft as possible coming around the front.
This is unlit excepting for the bottom light. Okay. What it does to the bottom is it provides the background or the base light. Okay. We've got a light specifically for the crest above the label there. The crest on the top of the label. Okay. Just to get that little bit of light happening on the Otherwise, it's the same side lights, two side lights. Okay, so the side light brings a hell of a lot of light in from the side there, but it's a sharper light than this, than this big piece of trace here. We've got very close to give a wide, wide source from our other key, as you call it. Okay, because we're shooting through liquid, put a little piece of reflector here, and I'm reflecting that light over there through the back there. So you've got to be careful not to see the thing. You've got to get enough light bouncing through there. Otherwise, it looks a bit dead and murky in there. Of course, these things can cause lots of problems with reflections in your other bottle. Okay. Um, remember that if you're spritzing, you might not see any of those imperfections. Right, the scene you're seeing here is the model agency for Saturday's scene. And it's a very wide angle shot. You've, we've got windows to work through. And we'll take you through to Vincent, who's going to show you the whole setup of the place. Let's go. Our main light source is three lights through this 8x4 trace frame. We will be using these three lights to balance the daylight coming through the windows on the right of the floor plan. For the mounting of the trace frames, we will be using combo stands, sometimes known as gobo stands or Charlie stands. Okay, which two holes am I going to line up? Can you see through there? This one. That's the size of that spigot. Okay. Along with two extendable columns, these stands also have two perforated knuckles, which accommodate most sizes of spigot and can clamp onto flat objects. The combo stand allows for the exact placement and three-dimensional orientation of any piece of equipment and is used throughout the film industry. Yeah. Okay, the one at your elbow is your main. Yeah, I'm just tightening that off. That's right hand rule. That's the one at right hand rule. Okay, tighten up. We need to go up. Start on the top. You can't go high. Then you need a ladder to go high. Okay, this is on the wrong side. This is left hand. It's on the left hand side. So when the weight of the trace frame pushes down here, it will loosen this and it will open this knuckle and let the whole caboodle fall, collapse so during shot. So we need to get this onto the right hand side. Then I want to go this, so I get the stand up out of the way. Now, now, 
right hand side. This is the right hand side rules. Okay, we've got to find this again. Thank you. Okay, stay there. What I'm going to do is loosen this and I'm going to go up so that I get an angle on this. Get this out of the heads one. Mm -hmm. Safety first. Everything finger tight. Everything. Okay. Much tighter. Much tighter. That's holding it already. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's up in position. Okay. This is a gobo stand or a C stand or a Charlie stand. Charlie stand. Whatever you choose to call it. Very handy, you can place anything and manipulate its exact location due to the multiple nodes allowing you to adjust things on the X, Y and Z axis. Just make these little sharp edges of sticking out stand arms more visible to the eye with a bit of white tape or a poly cup on the end of the stand. Otherwise they might rip all your lighting down. Someone might bump it and hurt themselves. Okay, let's put up all four lights. Got one dedicated to the desk through the top here. Another one dedicated to the end of the office there. Okay, that lamp's going to be in the way of this one. That's a 575. 1.2, one more. Get a 1.2, put it on the street. And straight through. Keep one? them far back, not this close, because. You want to spread it, you don't want to have beam coming through too much. On this combo stand, you've got a 20 mil female fitting in the top, and you've got a 15 mil that you can okay, use for smaller fine. lights. These are combo ballasts that do a 575 HMI and the 1.2s. Head to ballast cable for each of them. Lining up the slit at the top with the little key at the top there. So yeah. it goes to the top, comes in like that. Then the collar, keeping this straight, turn the collar in on the key waves. Okay, tip switch. Um, I switched it off so that when I switch it on, um, I don't have any chance of anything blowing or anything. Set the flicker free. Don't put it, leave it on maximum. Leave it on flicker free so that we don't have problems. Switch this off now. That's your strike knob. That pushes it. Okay. Remote strike. And off we go. Yeah. The go. female side. Go, go, go. Female side, same type of fitting. There you're two. Clickety click. Tie up. Let's tie this up with this thing that doesn't tie. Tie. Just avoid. To avoid strain on your ends of your cables here. And also on your mounting of your cable into your light. Okay, I'm going to get power. In 
cut off on the side if you want to cut off like there. Or you can use it at the top to come down you on your back wall, off your back wall. Make a diagonal. Yeah. Slip. We're going to be shooting. For bound light, you generally keep the bound doors wide open. Okay. Yeah. Another one to your left there. You can distract it if you want. Lock off. Mm -hmm. Bang, bang. Bang your light. Okay, lock off. I'm going up. Do it. Top level, eh? Yeah. Knock. As you take your light up, always put your hand just above the neck, the knuckle. I'm going to drop the light to get it down. Use your left hand as a clutch. Wear gloves if you can. And then take it the last. Be soft when it touches here. Don't hold here. The danger is you hold there and then you put your hand on the upper thing. What's going to happen is the light is going to slide downwards. Boom. On top of your head because you're holding the wrong section of the stand. So, always put your hand on the above the knuckle that, that you, you are using. and then do it and then you can control very carefully the descent of very heavy lights this will kill you because the light will fall on your head or it will just kill the light if it doesn't get you Janus plug in South Africa different or all over the world 220 now when you plug your plugs in at the wall switch them on so that you can work with the light someone going to strike this button we go. The power. Yeah, we've got power. Okay, now we have to come up to the head. Now you come up to, to the, the head. head. Wait. Okay, leave it. That's Don't zero. That's on. One is on, zero is off. Good. Hit him, one. And this is the. Spot and flood. That's flood. That's flood. Makes a large light source but less light. And spotting. Spotting gives a much narrower, tighter, concentrated pressure. light. However, if you want to fill that trace frame, so I'm going halfway spot flood to get uh, a whole expanse of this as a light source rather than a spot going through. The clamp you see being used is called a MAFA clamp a device that can clamp onto flat surfaces of various thicknesses, as well as round bars. The magic arm attached to the MAFA clamp is an ingenious device that when the central knob or lever is loose, allows you to orientate both ends to the exact position you need. And when you tighten the central knob, the arms lock into the position you set it to.
as you can see the difference in color between that light and those blue lights is vast see the blue and the yellow on the hand so in order to avoid having too much of a mixed illumination we're going to use a half blue to bring the colors back together it's called a gel use the peg not a, not a plastic peg otherwise it will melt trace Trace. Now what no. we're going to do is we're going to put a little piece of trace to take off the harsh direct light on the people just underneath the light, but that the light would have more power further away. As the person walks close to the light, he starts walking behind the shadow. The thing is, when you're far away, you hit, the light hits you, and as you get closer, you start masking yourself behind the thing. Okay, we might be seeing this piece of wool here, so we actually want to cut it off. It's called spill. This, I'm going to cut the spill off, which is coming from. Find out where it comes from. Coming from between the... Where? Why not? I'm going to use something called black rat. Black rat stops the spill. As you can see, the spill has disappeared. Gels that are hanging in shot should always be tucked away if you can because they cause spill and they also are seen shot. Yeah. Hey Renee, how about some coffee? Sorry, but I have to go. I've got a lunch date. Alright, I just had a trouble. Coffee? Yes, please. Okay, any shoots coming up for us? Shoot. No, it's dry as a desert. What is the desert? The pudding? No, the big dry place, lots of sand. Ah, oh, desert. Is it a shoot on desert? No, Didi, there's no shoots. And here's a cup for the birthday girl. Great stuff, thank you. And the address? Yeah, 17. Service road. Okay, thank you. Okay, girls, girls, we've got a booking. Okay, it's for a neck massage product, and I'll get Harry to take you guys in the morning. Cool. Shoot. Yes, yeah, shoot. Massage product. And what is massage? Massage. Neck massage. Oh, yes, massage. Yeah. A <laughs> whole oh, massage? No, no, buddy. It's a machine used for your neck. It goes brrrr. Massage. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. No, it might be fun. <laughs> okay, okay. Renee, Renee, did you update the website? Uh, after lunch. We made the booking. <laughs> Hot dates. <sighs> Naomi, would you? Sure. What are you up to? Why do you look so strange? Nothing. Hey, Ryan. It's my ex-boyfriend. Yeah, well, but only if you know. This is his number. But we're not sure. This is? Oh, yeah. This was way out. Hey, I know what you guys are up to. You guys are planning something for my birthday, hey? No. <laughs> <laughs> Go check wardrobe. Hey, Beth. Excuse me. What's up? I think Ryan is cheating on Dave. Isn't that Renee's phone? With Renee. Oh my word! And it is it's the same number. That's his number as well. Talk to you about something. We found out that um, Ryan is cheating on 
Dave with Renette. And we got Are you the sure about this? Yes. And the numbers match. And she went on half that. So he's strongly suspected. Calls for discipline in me, make sure we. No, I think so too. <laughs> what now? Dave, I'm sorry. We've had a bit of an incident at the office. Bev, uh, we got a SMS um, on Renee's phone from Ryan. She said she went on a hot date. Mm. Bastard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How can you do this to me? I'm going to call the disciplinary hearing and get to the bottom of this. What's wrong? So, would you like to tell me what this is about? Why everyone's looking at me? Why don't you tell us what's going on, Renee? What's this about? So where have you been? Out on lunch, like I told you. With whom, I ask? Do you have no self-respect? <laughs> With a hot date. Yes, we know. And you even have the nerve showing up here with flowers. What's wrong with that? Like Ryan, my boyfriend Ryan. You know, the hot date. On her birthday. And you call yourself a friend, because that's what friends do, hey? We're meant to be working as a team, Renee. You guys, you've got it all wrong. Hey, 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 where's my birthday, babe? Ryan! Look what me and Renee went out and got for you. <gasps> Happy birthday. I can't believe it. Let's go. So. I'm so sorry, Rune. I'm really, I'm so sorry. I accept your apology.
This is mood lighting. All right, so what you basically see now is two tungsten lights. The key light from the left-hand side of your face, camera right, and you always talk from the position of the camera, and the backlight, which is also tungsten, 3,200 degrees Kelvin, from the left of her face, uh, well, the camera left, her right. Now, yeah, that's the light you can see there. This backlight gives you an exact idea of how to highlight. Now, your backlight can be a lot stronger than your front light because you only see a tiny little bit of it around the edge and it's, it's nice to actually make it. It can be up to two stops hotter. Now, one of the ways of creating a three-dimensional look on what is essentially a two-dimensional medium, a flat screen or a television screen, which is flat, is that <clears throat> you can alternate the colors and by using different colors on different sides of the face you help create that three-dimensionality and you can also obviously use color on your lights, gels on your lights to help create mood. Now let's show you what that backlight would look like with what we've got a gel on it half blue. Suddenly you see that that extra color in there adds mood and it because it's a different color you get a three-dimensional, a greater effect of three-dimensionality than you would uh, with the colors being the same. So it's a little bit of experience required and then you can really just start playing around with using different colors without being too obvious unless you want it to look like a music video. That's the key light off, bouncing against the polystyrene and it's on. And that gives you, in terms of a normal lighting, the major light. To give an idea of how to control that light we want to drop the key light level a little bit, so you just let, let less light fall onto the polystyrene that's providing the bounce. And you've seen the adjustment happen to your face. It's very subtle. You've got to be very, very, very gentle to achieve a proper look. As you can see now, we're coming with a tungsten light. And as you put in a blue light, it changes the mood of the shot and we'll match the two lights, the color of the two lights, as you can see. It's just a matter of experimenting, going for the look and the feel that you want. Have a look, show them again. Take the light off. So that's mixed illumination, and this would be bringing the colors together so that they're the same color temperature, put it back in. Very nice and really up to the lighting man to experiment with to get the look and feel you want. Her eyes might need a little bit of accentuating. So we've put an eye light which is quite close to the camera. It's shining through a little polystyrene cutter with a little piece of gel, brushed silk, and there's the hole. Switch off for a second. There's the hole, and the light shining through that hole, and switch on and off. That's what it's doing. It's just catching the top and the bottom of her, of her eyes so that her eyes are nicely highlighted. This light has got a light poking through it. Aha! Yes. Causing a glow. Only this light here on my chest. So we've actually rimmed this on both sides with a backlight. Okay, I've spread it a little bit with, with this uh, poly, but I had to use the hard side and uh, bring these lights really close to actually get it to read nice and hot on the outside there. 
Okay, and this one does the other side. It's quite difficult getting them at the same intensity. Okay, using a very, very blue gel. Or midnight blue. Midnight blue. It's a full red. And I've had to take the light down with that uh, I'd like to take the light down in intensity with this piece of trace because it's giving me a it's giving me a circle and a circle there. Double circle, yeah. It's giving me it. a double circle. So if I go there, it becomes a spot. Softens it. Softens it into a, a semi-double circle. I can still see it. But then I went there. And if you move. If you move the hole on the poly closer to the light, your hole, your hole your gets spot huge. gets a lot bigger. Yeah. So the further away you take a cutter or a gobo, which is what this is, the more definite your shadow becomes. Your shadow starts getting hard edges. So we've got uh, two 300s with midnight blue on, one 800 redhead coming through the hole onto the bed we go. With pink, cosmetic pink and... With deep cosmetic pink. It's, it's red actually. It's, gone, it's all the way to red. And uh, the two midnight blues coming off the side. To make a spotlight, uh -huh. as you, you were saying, we just got to mount this on here. And this is a very unprofessional amateur shot. That's as bad as it can look, where you have a very dark side on the face, thanks to the sun, and you've got your camera on auto, and you just don't have anything at looking nice. So you bring a reflector in, and you bounce back the sunlight into the face, and it looks a lot better. So what you do, is you get someone to hold a reflector or you mount a reflector and there you have a much better looking shot. It's quite a skill to hold a reflector properly and you need to understand that the angle of incidence of the light from the sun equals the angle of reflection. So you move the polystyrene up and down and sideways sideways and up and down and you find the hot spot on the face. So by moving it you get your perfect hot spot, the perfect position where the most light is reflected and there you have a shot that looks much better, the face is properly balanced. In other words, you have a key light on the left which is from the sun over there and you have a full light coming from the polystyrene and just show the left and right up and down movement, left, right, up, down. Just get that polystyrene properly positioned to give the most bounce back. And this is the difference between professional and amateur guys. Do not shoot people out in the sun without bouncing back the light.